You know, the deeper you go underwater, the greater the pressure exerted on you, right? That's because when you go deeper, there's more weight of water pushing down from above. Look at these two connected wells. Where is the pressure greater? Right here, where it's deeper. As a result of the pressure difference, water flows. And soon, the two wells are equally deep. So we say, water seeks its own level. To keep the water flowing, you'd need to maintain the difference in pressure between the two sides, which you might do with a pump, like this. This relates to electricity. Recall earlier that when we divide the total electric potential energy by the total amount of electric charge, we get a ratio we call the electric potential. Electric potential plays a role similar to that of water pressure. While a difference in water pressure can result in the flow of water, a difference in electric potential can result in the flow of charge, such as the charge carried by electrons. Here's a Van de Graaff generator with its dome charged to an electric potential of 5,000 volts. Here's a grounded metal sphere at zero volts. Because of the electric potential difference, charge can flow from one to the other. Ah, and that's it. No continuing flow of charge because there's no longer an electric potential difference. That is, unless you keep pumping the generator dome back up to a higher voltage, only then can a perpetual spark, a miniature lightning bolt, be maintained. A battery works as an electric potential pump. Chemical reactions within this battery assure that one side remains 1.5 volts higher than the other. Connect the two ends with a wire, and charge will flow through the wire up until the chemical reactions have been depleted. When we say charge flows in a metal wire, we're talking about the movement of the metal's loose conducting electrons. But get this, the speed at which those loose electrons travel down the wire is actually quite slow. They'll take about three hours to traverse a one meter distance. A snail can travel faster than that. The actual speed of electrons bouncing within the metal is in fact much greater only a tiny component of the electron's velocity, however, is directed along the circuit. We refer to this as drift speed. What's really fast is the electric field, which moves at the speed of light. More on electric fields in another lesson. But as soon as you close a switch in an electric circuit, the battery sends an electric field instantaneously through all parts of the circuit. In this way, the electric signal travels at the speed of light. This tells us that when we flick on a light switch, electric energy travels from the switch to the light bulb immediately. Good energy.